Alright, hello, welcome everybody to the Flight Sim Fan video. We're back on the F 18C Hornet by Eagle Dynamics and Bell Simtech. I am uh, currently getting myself loaded up with the new AIM 9Xs, and uh, this will be an ICLS tutorial, the Instrument Carrier Landing System tutorial, and I'm doing it in broad daylight so you can see uh, all the movements, how they correlate to uh, what it looks like outside the ship and what it looks like inside the HUD. So I'm going to put myself 8 miles behind the ship, and you can join me there. Flying onto the course of 255, which in my case right now is the final course of my runway for the ship. And so, to set up the ILS very quickly, uh, this is by the way a very basic tutorial. I'm going to start off with saying this is a very basic tutorial. Um, so what we're going to do is the ILS, hit ILS, we're going to hit on. 1-1 one, one is our channel, and channel 11. Then hit ILS on your MPCD. And now you've got a giant vertical bar and a very big horizontal bar. Let's put our gear out, we'll put our flaps down, put our hook down. Let's flaps full of gear out and flaps. Now, you see a big horizontal bar. I'll pause the server. Actually, I can't pause right now, but the, the big horizontal bar is our glide slope. That tells us if we need to go up, if we need to go down. That's what that, that's what, uh, that gives us. The big vertical bar gives us our, uh, which way we have to turn. Do we have to go left? Do we have to come right? It'll give us the turn. So right now I'm proceeding 258. Our runway is 255. So if I proceed like this, that line will slowly come into the middle. And our glide slope, I'm not going to I'm not going to climb for it. So you can see that our horizontal bar is a little bit above my velocity vector. That means I'm a little low. I'm not going to climb for it. I'm just going to wait till it meshes with my meshes with my um, velocity vector. Here it comes. So I'm going to start a little bit of descent. And now what I'm, all I'm trying to do is make a perfect crosshair between the velocity vector and the ILS needles, horizontal and vertical. If you want a bit more pr um, more of a precise look at it, you can also use the ADI, which is right here. It's a little harder to see at uh, actually in daytime, a little ne easier at nighttime. So let's say, for instance, I take out too much power. So my power is out. Let me put my controls up. My power is out a little bit. You'll see that line start to go up. See that line starting to go up above my velocity vector? That means I'm too low. So I'm going to stop my descent a little bit. We'll hold it about 500. Actually, we've got to go up a little bit more. But there's 380 feet per minute. See that line? It'll start to center up with our velocity vector, and eventually if I don't take out power, it'll get lower than my velocity vector, which means I'm too high now. So I'm going to take out some power. And so you're just playing this game. Same with the same with the runway. If I go to the right of the runway right here, you're going to see that bar. You know, it's going to come left. See how it's to the left of the velocity vector? left of the ADI, so that means I'm too left. Now this is already a scrubbed approach, but I was just trying to show you what it would look like and how you would uh, approach with the NILS. So if, the, if you're at the tip over, which is your 1,200 feet and about 3.5 miles, that glide slope bar from the top end of the velocity vector comes down and meets with you with the velocity vector, then you can start descending on the glide slope, which is that horizontal bar, and you can maintain that uh, glide slope. Uh, at about 3.5 miles at 1,200 feet around there. Uh, so I'll show you what I'm talking about right now, and I'll see when I'm set up again. So here we are at the back of the boat, six miles, simulating a case three. I'm a little high for my case three, uh, but we're all configured, gear flaps and hook. Now I'm gonna get back to my 1,200 feet mark, which I'm supposed to be for case three. That'll work just fine. Uh, so you can start getting set up with the localizer. The localizer is, as I said, the vertical bar. And the horizontal bar has appeared, but it's still high. So as I said, I'm not going to chase it. I'm just going to wait till the tip over, or until the, gli till the glide slope, which is the horizontal bar, comes down and meshes with my velocity vector. So we're at 5.1 miles. Also, I'm using the TACN to get that range. If you don't know how to use TACN, I'll have a TACN video linked in the description. That for, uh, to show you how to use it, very simple, a basic tack and tutorial, and then I'm going to be doing a arcing tutorial as well. So the, the uh, vertical bar is just to the right of my velocity vector, so I'm going to come just a bit right. Velocity vector, as I, sh I should mention, is the uh, circle with the horizontal line, a little vertical line. <laughs> it's this one right here, this circle. 
come back left to our heading of 255, which is our runway heading. Now you see that glide slope bar, the horizontal bar, is coming down closer towards us. It's coming closer to the velocity vector when we're level. So it should happen about 3.2 miles, something like that. Even actually looks like it's going to happen sooner because it's a little higher. You can also see here what it looks like on the 80. I'm actually climbing. That's my mistake. I <laughs> you look down for a second, you'll start climbing. So this is called a tip over. So the glide slope has passed our velocity vector. We can start descending for it. Ideally, you want to descend on it. So let's get let's start descending a bit more. And it's trying to give you a three degree glide slope. Uh, also, if you know how to on, uh, maintain on speed AOA, then this should be a breeze. If you don't, I have a video for that. I'll also link that in the description. It'll all be in the playlist uh, named Making the F-18 Easy. Or I think something like that. I'll, <laughs> I'll put it in the description. You'll see it there. So now we're maintaining a cross. So you want to have that big, a nice big crosshair in your HUD. That means you're good to go on glide slope or centered up for the runway. And then about 300 feet, you're going to look and transition over to the ball, 350 to 300. If I don't see it by 300 feet, the ball, um, I would like to go around. But technically, you can actually follow the ILS all the way in for the most part. I just wouldn't try it. Um, you you want to switch to the ball. Now, as you can see, I'm pointing towards the island right now. I still have a nice cross here, and I'm all centered up. Uh, that's because the, move, the carrier is moving 270, but our runway is 255. So you're gonna actually going to have a little bit of a drift of the runway. You're going to have to keep pointing right aileron in. So instead of doing that, I'm going to point my velocity vector at what's known as the crotch, which is just about here. And that'll fix that problem for us. So here we are, 290 feet. I'm seeing the ball. The ball's in sight. It's showing a little low. ILS is also correct, showing a little low. I'm going to come right now, adjust for my uh, aileron. Not that much pitch, this is all power. Ball still centered. There you go, so it's a perfect, perfect three. And that's how you use the ILS on the deck. I should note that the ILS only works for carriers. In the F-18, there is a mod you can have it on airfields, but it only works for carriers, instrument carrier landing system. Thank you for watching, I'll see you in the next video.